Hello everyone, this is Leon. As a Kingdom Hearts fan, I've always wanted to make some Keyblades. So at here I got the chance to make this Renfield Keyblade, and I really want to show you how you can make one for your own. So as usual, the template link is in the description below. Please feel free to check it out. Now first print the template onto the paper, then cut along the dash line, and connect them with tape. Next, this is my personal preference, I will glue the template onto a harder cutstock, so it is more durable than my hopes and dreams throughout the build. After that, use a 1cm aluminium tube for the inner structure. To do this, mark every bending point with a marker, and then bend it against the table edge with brute force. But I must warn you that it might leave some bending marks, so it is best to do it on a workbench, or do it with a layer of a wooden board on top of the tabletop, or your mama might gonna whoop your ass. Next, proceed to make this part. I use 4mm 75 degree hard EVA foam, so it'll be hard enough to hold the whole thing in place. I also did slanted cut at all the edges. After that, make a marking line at the back. Make a shallow cut at the middle, fold it in half, and make a slanted cut. Then you will get something like this. But sometimes sh** might happen, even for me. So I had to make another one. After that, first connect these two pieces like this with a super glue. And it should look something like this. After that, cut this out on same 4mm hard EVA foam, and also make shallow cuts at the back, so it can be folded outward, and it will get a cleaner seam line at the front. Next, I connect the both ends first, and attach it to the main blade. After that, I banded a new aluminum tube, because I accidentally broke the previous one when adjusting the angle. Now connect just one side of these two pieces, so the aluminum tube can still be slotted in from the other side. Then I mark the end here, it is for the aluminum tube to come out, because it is bended anyway. After that I broke the aluminum tube again, because I wanted to adjust the angle a little bit, but I guess I'm blessed with destructive power that no one can surpass even the metal can be broken under my hand. So I quickly make a new one and pretend nothing's happened. After that to make sure I got the position right, I went on to make the handle. And this will be made with 4mm hard EVA foam as well. Slot in the handle to make sure the position is right. And here I also wanted to show you that I did quite a lot of mistakes when building this. I broke like 3 or 4 aluminum just to get one right. So don't worry if you don't get it right at first time. Next I move on to attaching the handle onto the blade. I first use epoxy glue to attach small pieces of foam onto the aluminum tube as support. Then slot it into the handle after the glue is dry. After that, just use super glue to seal the edges, so the handle can stay nice and tight. As for the other end, I cut a V-shaped foam to fill the gap to hold the handle tightly. After the handle, proceed to the rest of the blade. It looks complicated here, but it is actually quite straightforward. Every part will be made with 4mm hard EVA foam, but there is also a little trick here. In case the cutting angle isn't low enough, I also use a rotary tool to sand down the foam, so the edges can connect perfectly. After that, just finish up the rest of the part. I minimize the visible seams by marking cuts from the back. This will improve the overall neatness of the prop. After that, proceed to this handle part. This will be using 10mm EVA foam as the middle piece and sandwich with 10mm EVA foam. Next, I make a mark for the aluminum tube to slot it in and cut it out. I also cut off the excess aluminum tube with a pipe cutter, so it can fix perfectly in, just like what she said. Then I use the counter adhesive and sandwich it with another two pieces. Next, cut four pieces of this on 5mm foam. Remove the inner circle here and marks on the foam. Remove the bigger circle and marks on the foam as well. This will be used to identify the front side of the part. After that, remove this part. Then I first trace it onto a 5mm foam, cut it with one side center outwards, but I realize it doesn't work, as there will be gap between the foam and the angle isn't low enough. So I drew another piece on 5mm foam, and slightly extend it with the template. Then I use the equal length on the inner side. Mark the inner side, and it will be sent down afterwards. Then use a small rotary tool to sand it down. Next, use contact adhesive to stick them first. Just remember the center side will be at the inside. After that, just stick this part onto the main handle guard. So from the side here, you're gonna see this bump up like this. After that, mark the line here, and it will be used as the sanding reference. I also cut out the corner just to make the sanding easier. 
Then I moved to using a bigger gun, the trusty tool to do all your sanding, carving, and all kind of random work you could and couldn't imagine. At the beginning, I would use 8 degree sanding drum to remove most of the material. After that, I changed to 240 degree sanding drum to smoothen the rough surface. But too bad it can't smoothen my rough day. After the machine works, I switched to a wooden block and a sanding paper to get some more consistent and smooth the bevel. And I also smoothen the end with a smaller sanding drum. Next, I use epoxy to attach this guard to the handle. And I also use super glue to seal the seam. Next, I use 2mm foam for the end details. Then I measure the thickness here, cut a piece of foam on 3mm foams, and stick it at the end. Now back to the handle, I manually drew these details on both ends and made it slightly longer at the end. Then I made it with 3mm foam. As for the keychain holder, I made 3 copies on 4mm hard EVA foam, stack 3 of them together, and round the edges off with rotary too. Next, I used a short metal rod I cut off from the metal wire, drill holes, stick it on with epoxy glue for the metal part, and seal the EVA parts with super glue. Next, stress all the reference line on the handle guard. Then make a V groove with a knife. And don't forget about the circle too. Next will be heat sealing with a heat gun. Heat sealing the foam will help with the priming and painting process. It will close all the tiny pores and make the foam a lot more smoother. And I wish it can make my life smoother. After that I began the priming process. I normally spray a few layers of water-based paint with a spray gun nowadays. So it will form a thick layer over the foam so paint can sit on it. But you can use white glue or PVA glue, it will work just fine. After that I did a little bit of refining by sanding the surface with 600 grit sandpaper. Then I prime it again with a different color paint. So I will know the bottom layer is all covered. After that, I first paint it with silver, then I mask all the silver part with masking tape and use paper. Next, the secret to the perfect blue, silver, or whatever color you call it, because I can't even remember the code, is here. Just buy from the store and that's it. No secret. I mix it with the paint thinner and paint it with a spray gun. And now I got this really beautiful color just like you. But I have to mask it over to paint the rest of the color. After painting the black and the dark silver, I realized I forgot about the black line. So I mask it again and paint the line with an airbrush. And now is the moment of truth. Removing the masking tape and hope everything is fine. Last but not least, not to forget about these keychains. I have these 3D printed, sanded and of course painted. And I use this keychain holder and rings for the keychains. Next, I use masking tape to cover the plier to avoid scratching and attach everything together. Finally, clip this onto the keyblade and voila, keyblade.